Hi, I'm Terry Ryan, and I'm a developer evangelist for Adobe. Today I'm going to be talking about Cold Fusion Builder 2, which is coming out in beta, um, off, also called uh, Cold Fusion Builder Storm, which is the code name for it during development. Today I want to take you through sort of, uh, you just downloaded it, you're starting to mess around with it, play around with it, and you want to just get started. Um, I'm going to take you from kind of the very beginning to actually developing with it and actually coding with it. So I'm going to launch Builder here. When it first launches, it's going to give you this screen where you have to select a workspace. Now, a workspace is an area where they save all of your configurations, all of your settings, uh, all your projects uh, for, uh, for grouping purposes. So if you work with multiple clients, you want to have multiple settings, this is where you would do that uh, by having multiple workspaces. I'm going to go ahead and create this workspace. You'll see um, Storm 4. I'll hit OK. Um, it's going to launch. It's going to basically start out with a blank workspace. And One of the first things I want to do when I install Cold Fusion Builder 2 is I want to add a server. Uh, the benefits of Cold Fusion Builder is that there's high integration between the server product and the IDE. So in order to take advantage of that, I have to tell the IDE about the server. So I have a couple different Cold Fusion instances installed on machine. I'm going to go with the first one here, and I'm going to say Add Server. And uh, I'm going to call this Centaur Dev, which is the, what I call my server. Uh, I don't care about the description. I'm just going to point it to Centaur Dev, which is the host name I have for it. You'll notice when I say Centaur Dev, it assumes that it's remote, but in fact it is local. So I'm going to go back and fix that in a moment. Um, web server port 80, context root is always um, with slash um, application server name for most people it's going to be C Fusion. Um, it is not for me. It is actually Centaur. That's fine. Um, whatever you would put there, whatever it is for your settings, that's fine. And I'm going to hit put in my password here and hit next. Now um, I forgot to set it to local, so I'm going to click is local, and it's going to give me a different set of uh, configuration options. So the first thing it does, it needs to be pointed at the server home. If you are running uh, Cold Fusion, a standalone instance, it's going to be Cold Fusion 9 is going to be the name of the directory. Um, I'm running uh, multiple instances, so that's going to be JRun. So I look through to my application folders, and I look down to JRun 4. I'll hit OK. And document root is going to be the root of my web server, the file location for the root of my web server. Um, that um, I just happen to have a shortcut to that, and I'll point Centaur Dev is the name of it, and hit Next. At this point, it's going to ask me if I want to install extensions. Um, those are extra bits of application logic uh, and tools that you can build in Cold Fusion Builder to enhance Cold Fusion Builder. I'm going to not install them for now. I'm going to install one towards the end and show you kind of doing it. Uh, uh, a la carte. Let finish, and there we go. You'll see that I have access down here, Cold Fusion uh, Centaur Dev. It stopped. Um, now, one of the great things about having this baked into the IDE is I can actually manipulate the server itself. So I'm going to say restart or start server. And you'll see I actually get, I'm going to increase it here, but I get a console view. That's going to show me pretty much everything that gets dumped to the Cold Fusion console. As, like I started it from command line, but it's going to happen right here in the IDE. You see it's going to go through, and it's going to start the entire process of starting up a Cold Fusion server. We're going to see all of the services start up. Um, and then at the end, I'm going to see that the, um, the server CFC fired. And that's actually going to give me a message that says server ready. Cool. So if I click now and I go to servers, you'll see that um, it now says it's running. Um, now that it's running, I have a whole bunch of options for the server. Um, I could launch the server monitor. I can launch the Cold Fusion administrator. You'll see it launches right here within the IDE. Um, and also, by connecting to that Cold Fusion server, I actually get a list of all the databases that I have set up in my Cold Fusion server here in the RDS window. So just simply connecting the Cold Fusion server gives me a lot of information right from the get-go. But uh, I told you I was going to get you started with, uh, with a project here. So let's, let's get started with that. So I'm going to right-click over here and say New. We'll say Cold Fusion Project. Now, this may be de a departure for people coming over from Dreamweaver or Homesite. Uh, Cold Fusion Builder is an Eclipse tool, and 
therefore you have to kind of go with the Eclipse paradigm of everything's a project. Slightly sort of like Dreamweaver sites, but not quite. So just different enough to be annoying. Um, but once you get used to it, it's it's uh, it's they're quite powerful. So I'm going to go ahead and start up a project. I'm going to call it Storm uh, Storm Test Four, and uh, I'm going to not use the default location here, I'm actually going to uh, put it at a specific location. So I'm going to go Sites, I'm going to create a new folder, uh, what was it? It was Storm Test 4, it would help if the folder matched that, so I'll call that Storm Test 4. I'll go and Create, and Open, and there we go. Now, at this point with the project, it's going to ask me what Cold Fusion server I want to associate with. I only have one, but I could have multiple here. I'm going to pick Centaur Dev, which I set up in the beginning, and hit Next. Um, there's an additional option here. I'm just going to hit Finish, and there we go. Um, so I'm going to say New Cold Fusion Page, and we're going to kick off a page here. I'll call it index.cfm. Pretty basic stuff. And then let's just kind of fire off um, some code here. So I'm going to say CF Query, name, You'll see that Cold Fusion Builder is prompting me with options here. I'm going to call it test. I need a data source. Uh, and you'll see the Cold Fusion Builder gives me the options for all the data sources I have installed on Centaur, which is really, really helpful. So I'm going to point at CF Art Gallery. I'm going to close this off. And then say select star from. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's going to prompt me and give me a selection of uh, tables actually within that data source. So really, really helpful here. Okay, um, so we're all set. Uh, I've got some code here. I'm going to actually put a CF dump on the the screen here by doing Control Shift D. Um, unfortunately, that's not working. The reason why that's not working is because Cold Fusion Builder has its own preset uh, uh, shortcuts installed already. Uh, so I'm going to change that. So I'm going to go through and create my own shortcut here, just to kind of show you how you can speed up development here. Fusion, Profiles, Editor, Keys. And I'll go through and you'll see that if I look at CF Dump, insert a CF Dump, um, it's already got a shortcut, but that's not what I thought it was supposed to be. That's OK. Uh, because IDs are all about productivity, all about being able to customize that productivity. So I'm going to erase that and put in my own. It's going to tell me there's a little bit of a conflict, but I don't really care. I don't use that. So I'm just going to say OK. So now when I go back here, I'm going to hit Control Shift D, and now I've got uh, a dump. So cool, I'm going to dump that out. Now, one of the advantages of having set up the server here is that I can actually launch Safari, well, whatever native browser you have, in my case on Mac, it's Safari. Um, so I can launch this right within the IDE and see how this page looks. You'll see it gives me a little bit of an option there. I'll click through, and there we go. Dumped right within the IDE. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, but let's say I had to write a whole lot of these um, CF queries. I kind of want to speed that up, but I'm going to speed that up with a snippet. So I'm going to say plus. I'm going to call it CF query. Uh, I'm going to give it trigger text, and I'll explain what that trigger text is in a moment. Um, but then I just start it off. I'm going to uh, put the start block up there, put the end block down here. I'm going to erase the SQL because I don't want to change it every single time. I hit OK. Now, I, I said before uh, about th that uh, trigger text. Basically, I type it out, CFQ, which is what I typed, and I hit Control J. And then that's what triggers the snippet, and that's what causes that to appear on the screen. But that's kind of suboptimal. Uh, I don't want to have the same name and same data, data source for every uh, CF query, so I'm going to go back in and edit it. I'm going to add little tags that are going to kind of prompt me to put in the right content. So you'll see I do dollar sign, dollar sign, curly, bra uh, curly brackets, and I call it name, and I'll do the same thing for data source. And I will get um, uh, data source. And now I want to do the same thing, and I type CFQ. Uh, you'll see I get a little prompt that I can actually set the name and the data source. I'll call this test2, and I'll use the CF Art Gallery again. And when I do that, plugs it in. I'm already going. I can now write my SQL. So this is kind of showing off just how productive Cold Fusion Builder can make you. I'm going to show one last bit of productivity uh, gain here. 
um, with an extension. So I'm really quick going to show off this extension. I'm going to delete all this because this is all going to go away. So Cold Fusion Builder comes with a number of extensions. And um, they come, they don't, you don't have to install them, but you can. I'm going to go through the, 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 the motions of setting this up. So I'm going to go to Application, um, Cold Fusion. Uh, for me right now, this is labeled as Storm. I'll go to Plugins, I'm uh, sorry, Extensions. And there you see I have a bunch, one of which is Aptacular. I'm going to say OK, click on that. Um, it's going to uh, prompt me to, uh, to install, I'll say Next. I'm going to point it at the server. It's going to fill in everything for me. I'll hit Next, and it gives me the summary screen. Um, which, and if I hit finish, you install it. I, I actually, however, have this already installed. And I don't want to. I don't want to screw up what's there. So I'm going to do it a different way. I'm going to do um, an import. So I'll go to the same place. I'll go where I have it, which is sites centaur dev aptacular, um, and import it. So same same concept. They're both extensions. I one I'm importing, one I'm installing. They they work exactly the same way. This is. Um, this helps you if you're actually doing development. You can in import your extensions instead of having to package them and install them. OK. So I promised to show you crazy productivity. So I'm going to right click on Storm Test here. And I'm going to run Aptacular. And you see it adds it to the context menu here. I'm going to go through and say Create Application. Fire off the Create Application. And it's going to open a little window over here. Uh, I'm actually going to move this over here and then enlarge it so you see what's happening. So I'll say uh, put in my password. And you'll see it gives me a list of all the data sources I have on my server. So I'm going to choose CF Arc Gallery, which is what I was showing off before with the queries. I'll hit Generate Application. And it's going to process for a couple seconds. When it's done, it's going to give me a report of how many files it created and how long it took. You'll see it generated 66 files for me for in 8.1 seconds. Not bad. When I go and look now in my folder, you'll see it's now full of content. Well, there's nothing there before. It looked at the database and built all this stuff based on that database. And you look through, and I've got all CFCs for all the tables in that database. I've got uh, custom tags for uh, everything in the database, and I've got controllers here. Um, so if I go through and look at index.cfm, you can see the app it built. Um, I go through, and I can see my list of artists. And it basically created an administrative uh, interface for this application. Um, without me doing kind of any coding at all. So hopefully this shows off um, the great productivity features in Cold Fusion Builder, but also the fact that you can tailor it to work uh, how you want to. Um, thank you very much. If you want to find out more about Cold Fusion Builder, please check the uh, Adobe website.